Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Maths today for Monday the fifth week of Lent the 30th of March. Let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. And our first reading today from the book of Daniel we hear the story of Susanna who is the victim of scandalous and untrue allegations, while the Gospel puts before us the figure of the woman who has been caught in adultery and now is brought before Jesus. Let's now pause for a moment. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the prophet Daniel. There is a shorter version of this, but I'm going to read the, the long version today. In Babylon, <clears throat> there lived a man named Joachim. He had married Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, a woman of great beauty. And she was God-fearing, because her parents were worthy people, and he had, in, had, had instructed their daughter in the law of Moses. Joachim was a very rich man, and had a garden attached to his house. The Jews would often visit him, since he was held in greater respect than any other man. Two elderly men had been selected from the people that year to act as judges. Of such, the Lord said, Wickedness has come to Babylon through the elders and judges posing as guides to the people. These men were often at Joachim's house, and all who were engaged in litigation used to come to them. At midday, when everyone had gone, Susanna used to take a walk in her husband's garden. The two elders, who used to watch her every day as she came in to take her walk, gradually began to desire her. They threw reason aside, making no effort to turn their eyes to heaven and forgetting its demands of virtue. So they waited for a favourable moment. And one day, Susanna came as usual, accompanied only by two young maidservants. The day was hot and she wanted to bathe in the garden. There was no one about except the two elders, spying on her from their hiding place. She said to the servants, bring me some oil and balsam and shut the garden door while I bathe. Hardly were the servants gone and the two elders were there after her. Look, they said, the garden door is shut. No one can see us. We want to have you, so give in and let us. Refuse and we will both give evidence that a young man was with you and that was why you sent your maids away. Susanna sighed. I am trapped, she said, whatever I do. If I agree, that means my death. If I resist, I cannot get away from you. But I prefer to fall innocent into your power than to sin in the eyes of the Lord. Then she cried out as loud as she could. The two elders began shouting too, putting the blame on her, and one of them ran to open the garden door. The household, hearing the shouting in the garden, rushed out by the side entrance to see what was happening. Once the elders had told their story, 
The servants were thoroughly taken aback, since nothing of this sort had ever been said of Susanna. Next day a meeting was held at the house of her husband Joachim. The two elders arrived in their vindictiveness, determined to have her put to death. They addressed the company, summoned Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah and wife of Joachim. She was sent for and came and accompanied by her parents, her children and all her relations. All her own people were weeping and so were all the others who saw her. The two elders stood up with all the people round them and laid their hands on the woman's head. Tearfully, she turned her eyes to heaven, her heart confident in God. The elders then spoke. While we were walking by ourselves in the garden, this woman arrived with two servants. She shut the garden door and then dismissed the servants. A young man who had been hiding went over to her and they lay down together. From the end of the garden where we were, we saw this crime taking place, taking place and hurried towards them. Though we saw them together, we were unable to catch the man. He was too strong for us. He opened the door and took to his heels. We did, however, catch this woman and ask her who the young man was. She refused to tell us. That is our evidence. Since they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly took their word. Susanna was condemned to death. She cried out as loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that they have given false evidence against me. And now have I to die, innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me? The Lord heard her cry. And as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit residing in a young boy named Daniel, who began to shout, I am innocent of this man's, this woman's death. At which all the people turned to him and asked, what, what do you mean by those words? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, Are you so stupid, sons of Israel, as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. All the people hurried back, and the elders said to Daniel, Come and sit with us and tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. Daniel said, Keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. You have grown old in wickedness, he said, and now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you. You, with, it, with your unjust judgments, your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of guilty men, when the Lord has said, you must not put the innocent and, have, and the just to death. Now then, since you saw her so clearly, tell me what tree you saw them lying under. He replied, under a mastic tree. Daniel said, true enough. Your lie recalls on your own head. The angel of God has already received your sentence from him and will slash you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought in and said to him, Spawn of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel, and they were too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then, tell me what tree you surprised them under. He replied, under a home oak. Daniel said, true enough. Your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with a sword to drive home and split you and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, Blessing God, the Saviour of those who trust in him. And they turned on the two elders whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As prescribed in the law of Moses, they sentenced them to the same punishment as they had intended to inflict on their neighbour. They put them to death. The life of an innocent woman was spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
response to the psalm now. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. The Gospel Acclamation. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. Now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the Word of God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak he appeared in the temple again. And as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught in committing adultery. And making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this, man was caught, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with a woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and don't sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Unlike Susanna in the first reading, there seems to be little doubt about the guilt of the woman accused of adultery in the Gospel story. In the older Jewish story, God vindicates the innocent woman and frees her from her, her accusers. In the Gospel, Jesus takes the part even of the guilty woman and saves her from those who would have punished her for her crimes. The implication is that we should forgive even the guilty, especially since none of us is without sin. Let us call on the name of the Lord Jesus, who saves his people from their sins. And the response to each of these prayers is, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Christ our Lord, you gave yourself up for the church to make her holy. Renew her once more through the spirit of repentance. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Good Master, let young people discover that way of life which you have planned for each one of them. May they be faithful to your grace and fulfil your will for them. 
Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Give hope to the sick and make them well again. Help us to comfort and take care of them. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. In baptism, you made us sons and daughters of the Father. May we live for you now and always. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Grant to the faithful departed peace and glory. Let us reign with them one day in your heavenly kingdom. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Let's pray for the people of our parish for whom this Mass is being offered. And we ask Mary to join us in our prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, your abounding grace has enriched us with every blessing. Transform us from our sinful condition to newness of life, and prepare us for the glory of your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, <clears throat> for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let's pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Obedient to our Lord's command, let's pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other, as best we can, a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Let us pray. <clears throat> Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me in this celebration of the Mass today. Apologies, I positioned the iPhone in such a way I didn't really show the altar. I'll try and get it better tomorrow. Can I say a big thank you to those who brought uh, food and other goods along for the food bank yesterday. That was, that was lovely. I hope we can continue that every Sunday, especially during this time of crisis. Wish you a very pleasant day. Be safe and well. Let's bow our heads for a blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take care.